ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله الحمد لله على نعمه الاسلام والسنه our praise and thanks belong to allah for the bounty of islam and for the bounty of the sunnah our praise and thanks belong to allah for guiding us to islam and for guiding us to the sunnah alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has allowed us to live to witness and to see and to experience another ramadan bismillahi ta'ala we praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us again this tremendous opportunity to gain good for ourselves everyone who they plague themselves with sin and transgression then most definitely they need to take advantage of the lights of these auspicious occasions this occasion of ramadan the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said as relates to the one who fasts ramadan man sama ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi that whoever he fasts ramadan or whoever she fasts ramadan out of iman out of true faith and anticipation of the reward then they will have their previous sins forgiven in ramadan it has been legislated for us as a recommended act which is highly stressed and that is the standing in the nights of ramadan praying unto allah azza wa jal inside of the tarawih as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said man qama ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi that whoever stands in ramadan meaning they stand in prayer in the nights of ramadan out of true faith and anticipation of the reward then they will have their previous sins forgiven so bila shak wa bila ray ramadan has inside of it many opportunities for the servant to gain good for themselves many opportunities for the servant to be forgiven by Allah azza wa jal many opportunities for the servants to gain a great amount and a vast amount of good good deeds that could be gathered inside of this auspicious month in this auspicious occasion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of his noble book he tells us ya ayyuhal ladina amanu o you who believe Allah azza wa jal he addresses the believers those who have faith those who have iman those who surely believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ta'ala he addresses them Allah ta'ala he says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kutiba alaykumus siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum 
لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That all you who believe, fasting has been written upon you as it was written upon those who were before you so that you will attain piety. So that you will attain piety, that you will attain taqwa. So from the ways and from the means for the attainment of taqwa is siyam, fasting. Fasting in this auspicious month. This is from the ways that an individual, he will attain piety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in many places in the Qur'an that Jannah is for those who have taqwa. That for those who have taqwa, the Jannah is for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His mercy and out of His kind and most excellent treatment of His slaves, He has prescribed upon us fasting. That fasting that is a means by way in which an individual will attain taqwa. That taqwa with the Jannah is only for those who have taqwa. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that He has prescribed fasting for us as He had prescribed it for those who came before us so that we may attain piety. Qala al-Alama al-Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi rahimahullahu ta'ala he mentions, commenting on Allah Ta'ala's statement, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ O you who believe, fasting has been written upon you. Written upon you meaning it has been made obligatory upon you. As it was made obligatory upon those who came before you. Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, Rahmatullah Rahmatullah alayhi he says, وَهَذِهِ فَقْرَةِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ وَهَذِهِ الْآيَةِ يَخْبِرُنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَنَّهُ فَرَضَ الصِّيَامِ وَأَوْجَبَهُ عَلَيْنَا كَمَا فَرَضَهُ وَأَوْجَبَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this portion of the ayah, in this portion of the verse, He informs us that verily He has prescribed fasting upon us and he has made it obligatory upon us as he has made it obligatory and prescribed it on those who came before us. As he has prescribed it and made it obligatory upon those who came before us. وَقَدْ فَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا صِيَامُ ثَلَاثَ أَيَامُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَهْرُ وَالصِيَامُ عَاشُرَا Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made it obligatory upon those who came before us to fast three days out of every month and to fast the day of Ashura. Allah Azza wa Jal, He made this obligatory upon those nations who came before us. Waqeer, and it has been said as Al Alama, as Sheikh Ahmed Al Najmi, He mentions Waqeer, and it has been said, In Allah, Farada ala bani Israel, Siyam Ramadan. And it has been said that Allah had prescribed and made it obligatory upon the children of Israel that they fast Ramadan. That they fast Ramadan. وَأَنَّهُمْ أَضَّافُوا إِلَى ذَلِكَ عَشْرًا And then they added to it. The children of Israel, they added to the obligation of fasting Ramadan 10 days. 10 days. So thus, فَصَارَتْ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا So it became 40 days. So it became 40 days. As those who have a background in the religion of the people of the book, they will know what is commonplace amongst them to hear the mentioning, the mentioning of fasting for 40 days. Of fasting for 40 days. Al-Alama, Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, Rahmatullah alayhi, he explains that it has been said this is how they got to that number of 40 days. This is how they got to that number of 40 days. Because it was originally 30 days prescribed upon them one month and then they added to it 10 days. So thus it became 40 days. ثُمَّ إِنَّهُ مَرِضَ أَحْدُ الْمُلُوكِ أَوْ أَحْدُ الْأَحْبَارِ And then it was said that one of their kings, one of their kings or one of their monks, he had became sick. One of their kings or one of their monks who had a lot of status and position, he had become sick. And when he got sick, 
فالنظر أنه إن شوفيا أن يضيف عشر أيام and he made the oath he took an oath that if he were to find or if he were to be cured that if he was to be cured from this sickness then he will add to those 40 days 10 more days and he will add to those 40 days 10 more days now فصارت خمسين يوما so then it became 50 days وهذه الزيادة لا شك أنه أو أنهم مخطئون فيها but this additioning this adding on to it بلا شك ولا ريب no doubt about it they were wrong in doing this they were wrong in doing this نعم this is not permissible to add on to that which has been legislated نعم so it is important that we understand this aspect that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he legislates something for us then we don't increase upon it. We don't add to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as an example, He has legislated for us, raka'atan, two units of prayer for Salatul Fajr. So it is not befitting that one will come and add to it an additional raka'at, making it three raka'at, or he will come and add uh, yani two raka'at, or yani another two raka'at, making it four raka'at, and so on and so forth. But we keep it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has legislated it. He legislated it as being two, so thus it is two, so on and so forth. And this is the proper mannerism that the believers are to have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are not to add on to that which has been legislated. Naam? So from the many things and from the many ways and from the many deviations of those who came before us is that they used to add on to that which was prescribed upon them. Naam. فَعِنَّ ذَلِكْ Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi goes on to say, So thus with this, أوجب الله عز وجل على أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صيام هذا الشهر الكريم. So from this, Allah Azzawajal, he has made it obligatory upon the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they fast this month. They fast this auspicious month, this month of Ramadan. Naam. And then in this month of Ramadan, there is a special occurrence that had taken place inside of this month. And that is, as Alama Ahmad al Najmi he mentions, that we fast this month, this month of Ramadan. We fast this noble month of Ramadan. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ أَنزَلَ فِيهِ Quran. Because inside of this month, Allah Azza wa Jal, He sent down the Quran. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in His noble book, شَهْرُ Ramadan, The month of Ramadan. شَهْرُ Ramadan, الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ Quran. The month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was revealed therein. The month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an it was revealed therein. Allahu Akbar. The Qur'an being revealed is a tremendous mercy for mankind. Because it gives them direction in every aspect of their life. It gives them direction in every aspect of their lives. It is a guidance for them. It is a criterion by way in which they will understand the difference between good and evil, right and wrong, halal and haram, and so on and so forth. The Qur'an, it is that which, if we were to implement it truly inside of our lives, it is that which, bi ta'ala, we will be from the people of Jannah. Now we will be from the people of the Jannah. Because when a person truly implements the Qur'an, bila shak, وَبِلَا رَيْبَ Undoubtedly, they have to be from the people of the Sunnah. Because Allah Azza wa Jal inside the Qur'an, He commands us with obedience of the, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا And whatever the messenger gives you, take it. And whatever he prevents you from this, stay away from it. Allah Azza wa Jal in the Qur'an, He tells us, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ Obey Allah and obey the messenger. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. So there are many, 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 many ayat inside of the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal commands us to listen to and to obey His messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So let it not be understood by the statement that the Quran is that which if we implement it, the person he will go to the Jannah to say, 
to the exclusion of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. No, because there is no separation between the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We have to cling to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And inside of this tremendous month, Allah azza wa jalla sent down the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jalla sent down the Quran. So let us take this opportunity to increase in the reading of the Quran. If the year has gone by and caught us up to this point and we weren't increasing in reading the Quran, then let us start from right now to increase in the reading of the Quran. If the year has come up into this point and our masahib have upon it gubar wa iyadu billah, have upon it dust wa iyadu billah. Now let us take this opportunity to make sure that there's no more accumulation of dust upon the masahif, there's no more accumulation of dust upon the upon the copies of the Quran that we what? That we utilize and we read them, that we read throughout the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, that we contemplate upon it, that we ponder over its meaning, that we implement the guidance that we find therein. This is the time to make that change. If we didn't make that change up until now, this is the time to make that change. فَجَعَلَ صِيَامَهُ So therefore, Allah Azza wa Jal, He has made the fasting of it, meaning the fasting of Ramadan, شُكْرًا لِنِعْمَةِ Quran As a show of gratitude for the bounty of the Qur'an. As a show of gratitude for the bounty of the Qur'an. And if the one who was wise were to contemplate and to reflect and to think about that, then the fasting for them, it will take on a new dynamic they will have a deeper understanding. They will understand more better its significance. They will understand and be able to appreciate Bismillahi Ta'ala more its its virtue and so on and so forth. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us of those who show gratitude, make us of those who are thankful unto Him, to make us of those who are patient. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us of those who benefit from Ramadan in every which way, shape, and form. Hada. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد الله عز وجل at the end of the aforementioned ayah يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام to the end of the ayah الله تعالى he says at the end of it لعلكم تتقون so that perhaps you will attain Piety, you will attain taqwa, or so in order that you attain taqwa, naam, that you attain piety, having true fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, which is to do and to carry out those commandments of Allah upon light, upon knowledge, upon knowledge, hoping for the reward from Allah and to stay away from the prohibitions of Allah upon knowledge, fearing the punishment of Allah. This is taqwa. Naam, this is taqwa. And it's incumbent and it is important that we are those who strive to have a consciousness of our actions and what we are doing to make sure that what we are doing it is halal, it is permissible. And to make sure that we are staying away from those things that are prohibited, those things that are haram, that we stay away from these things, fearing. The punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal for those who embark upon those things in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made prohibited. That which will help us come to this level, come to this understanding, attain this, is what? Is the fasting. Because the fasting, it teaches us. The fasting, it teaches us to be patient. It teaches us to be patient. Naam. And you see that, you see that connection between the gratitude and between patience. Naam. Because this is Iman. This is Iman. The ulama they mention that Iman Nusfan. That Iman is two halves. Faith is of two halves. Nisfuhu Sabar. Wa Nisfuhu Shukar. Half of it is patience and half of it is gratitude. With Dalil. And the proof is the statement of 
the Prophet وسلم, about the affair of the believer and how the affair of the believer it is amazing. Naam. The Prophet وسلم, he said, speaking about the believer, the believer is the one who has Iman. Naam. In Asabatu Sarra Shakar Fakana Khairun Lah that if he is touched with good times, happiness, prosperity, so on and so forth, he is thankful. He shows gratitude, and that is better for him. Gratitude, you see? Wa in asabatu Bara Sabar Fakana Khairun Lah O Kamakar Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if there touches him, Difficulty, if there touches him, trials and tribulations, huh? He is patient, and that is better for him. And that is better for him. So there we see what? The patience. And these are the description of what the believer is that they are patient and that they uh, show gratitude. They show gratitude and they are patient. Naam? So when you look at this tremendous act of worship, fasting, fasting is a show and an illustration of gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal, thankfulness unto Allah Azza wa Jal for. Blessing us and sending down the ni'mah, the bounty of the Qur'an, of the Qur'an. And when a person, he fasts, he learns patience on every level. He learns patience on every level because, contemplate, when we fast, we ought to stay away from food and drink. When we fast, we ought to stay away from relationships with one's spouse. These things are halal every other time of the year outside of fasting we can do them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to stay away from that which is permissible while we are fasting so if a person acclimates himself to staying away from that which is permissible while he is fasting then this will help acclimate him and will make it easier for him to, to stay away from those things that are impermissible all the time you see it will make it easy for him to stay away from those things that are impermissible all throughout the year. Because no doubt, while fasting, we are not allowed to, to do those things that are haram all year round. While fasting, just like we're not allowed to do them, we were not fasting. Naam? So it teaches us patience on every level. When the thirst becomes overbearing or, be, or becomes intense, it teaches us patience. And for those you know that the reward of your patience comes quickly and a better reward will come later because no one wallahu a'la wa a'lam becomes thirsty throughout the days of Ramadan and they are patient upon that except that within some moments that thirst goes away no he's not thirsty no more right we have all have experienced this you become thirsty at Dhuhr, you don't remain thirsty from Dhuhr all the way to Maghrib. But by the time of Asr, sometime after Dhuhr, you're not even thirsty no more. You forgot you was thirsty, right? So this is from the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He puts upon us uh, while we are fasting. And the reward that will come to us for the fast, then it is that which Allahu Akbar is a tremendous reward. A tremendous reward. al Ahmad al-Najmi, rahmatullah he mentions that the word la'alla here in this ayah, la'alla, that this word wajiba al wuqur that it is something that la'alla is going to happen. Now, is going to happen. Not that there's a possibility it may or may not. No, it's going to happen. This was understood from this ayah that it will happen. Well, here taraji, and this is a hope that is realistic. This is a hope. That is realistic. It's accomplishable. Naam. Wa hada taraji ya taraktab ala siyam. And that this hope it is linked to the fasting. Wa matakana al siyam ala waj al matlub. But only when the fasting is upon its proper way. You understand? It would definitely happen. You will attain piety. The one who fasts properly, he will attain piety. But the condition for him to the attain that piety, huh? Because he fasted is that he has to fast correctly. He can't be doing no funny stuff while he's fasting. And what will make a better what will make us better understand this is the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Man lam yada qawl zur wa amalu bihi. Whoever does not leave off the statement of zur wa amala bihi and acting in accordance to it. Wa zur who will kadib 
كما قال العلامة إمام بن باز رحمة الله عليه الزور هو الكذب it means lying lying in every which way shape and form whether that lying is a lying by a word whether that lying is giving false testimony huh? so on and so forth that a person he's untruthful he's lying and so on and so forth this is the statement of zur a person when he's fasting has to leave off these statements leave off cussing at people leave off speaking disrespectfully to people leave off being verbally abusive and so on and so forth leave off lying and he has to leave off actions in accordance to it so whatever action that will come as a result in, in the wake of that of that lying and, 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 and nasty and despicable speech he has to leave those things off so therefore when a person when a person is fasting he has to avoid that which is haram so it's not that he just fasts and his stomach it fasts but his eyes have to fast so he's not looking at those things that are haram his ears have to fast so he's not listening to those things that are haram his hands have to fast so he's not touching those things that are haram his feet have to fast he's not walking toward those things that are haram and so on and so forth he has to have a total fast and if he does this upon the way that is required then you will see some benefit for him and he will attain the piety. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, whoever does not leave off the statement of falsehood and actings in accordance to it, فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَّةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدَعْ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ That whoever does not leave off false speech and action in according to it, then Allah has no need that they leave off their food and their drink. No need that they leave off their food and their drink. فلا شك ولا ريب no doubt أن الصوم فوائد that there are many 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 benefits of fasting from them as we see here زيارة الإيمان that a person his faith it will increase his faith it will increase وزيارة التقوى and that a person his تقوى his piety it will increase وزيارة الخشية لله and that a person his knowledge based fear of Allah عز وجل it will increase his knowledge-based fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, it will increase. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who fast upon His proper manner, to make us of those who are increased this Ramadan inside of their Iman, who are increased inside of their taqwa, who are increased aside of their of their khashiyah for Allah Azza wa Jal, the knowledge-based fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, those who are increased in their khushur, in their humility unto Allah Azza wa Jal, that we are increased in this Ramadan with the increase that will continue throughout the rest of the year, that will continue throughout the rest of our lives, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases us in good upon good, upon good upon good, until we meet Him Jalla wa'ala, while He is pleased with us. Hada fa aqimu salam.